Great. Now there's radioactive shrimp to worry about. A lot of people have been messaging me about to talk about this subject. Uh, recently, the FDA just came out with a warning about frozen shrimp coming from, I believe, the Philippines. It's like called Great Value uh, Frozen Shrimp. That uh, was uh, shipped to Walmarts and different states, or it was supposed to be. Apparently, they caught the shipment of uh, the contaminated frozen shrimp that was contaminated with cesium 137 which is a radioactive byproduct. So anyway, I'm going to talk about how this actually affects people. And technically, it doesn't affect anyone because they caught the shrimp as it was coming into the country. Now, they did this because they actually have uh, scanners that sit there at the ports of entry. And so every cargo container that comes on there, it gets scanned for radiation. And based off of that radiation, they can actually tell what type of isotopes uh, they're looking at if they detect radiation. They're like these giant like scintillation crystals that measure that gamma energy. And so I'm gonna kind of give like a, <laughs> like a rudimentary like uh, look at like the readings that they were uh, detecting from that frozen shrimp. Since I can't find any of that frozen shrimp because it never made it into the United States, I can't show that as a real world example. So I'm just gonna show you really quick uh, what they were reading and what those readings kind of turn into as far as like uh, something a little, that's a little more digestible and understandable. So the shrimp that they found had about 67 becquerels of activity. And that's why I'm using this meter to actually show that because cesium-137, which is what this source is right here, cesium-137 is what they found on that shrimp or in it. And so I'm using the exact same type of isotope that they discovered inside of the shrimp and put it about, eh, it's about maybe 10 inches away from the detector. Now, the reason why I'm using this one instead of something like the Radicode is because this one can actually detect beta radiation. And that is what is primarily coming off of this sample of CZ-137. And if you want to hear what that sounds like, So that's what it sounds like from those particles of radiation coming off of the sample and hitting the detector right here. So if I move, if I even just cover my hand on it, you can hear how it drops off pretty quickly. So now what I'm going to do is actually change this to counts per minute. So you can kind of see what that's like. So change that over, measuring unit. There we go, counts per minute, select. And since this is a little tricky with this. So I'm getting around 900 counts per minute. And what the counts refer to is how many particles of radiation are coming off of this and flying up to here. So now, is this level of radiation dangerous? Um, no. You would actually have to eat like a lot of the shrimp for it to be considered a problem because your body can bioaccumulate cesium-137 in there because it has a lot of the same properties as like um, uh, strontium-90 and stuff like that. So your bones kind of want to acquire... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got that wrong. Cesium-137 does not attach itself to the bones. It actually uh, distributes itself throughout the whole body, kind of like sodium or potassium does. And it doesn't connect itself to the bones like strontium or radium does because they're in two different columns. So I screwed that up. And to kind of shed a little more light on it, I'm going to break out my radiochemistry book so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So you can see right here, cesium-137 has a 30-year half-life, but a 70-day biological half-life. That means after 70 days, half of that material would still be in your body. Another 70 days, half of that half, so on and so on. Uh, but you would have to eat so many pounds of shrimp and just eat that shrimp that is contaminated for there to possibly be a problem somewhere in the future. So now I switch over the clicker uh, back on the setup to kind of demonstrate something because their actual limit that they put on like how much cesium-137 uh, can actually be in our food before it's considered a problem is 1200 um, becquerels per kilogram. So to give you an idea of the difference between what 1200 becquerels sounds like and 60, 
870 becquerels. Let's uh, give you a little demonstration here. So as you can see, that, that's a that's a pretty big difference in activity just from the sound of it. So what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't really be concerned about it. It's something that is interesting to kind of find out like why in the hell this even happened? Why is there shrimp contaminated with CZ-137? Uh, CZ-137 is a fission byproduct. So it actually, be, it comes from uh, nuclear energy or um, like nuclear bombs. And so it's, it's only really created in any type of quantity, quantity in that um, reaction, that fission reaction. So it does occur in very small quantities in the atmosphere from cosmic rays interacting with different elements, but uh, nothing to where it actually be contaminating uh, food. Apparently got all of the shrimp that was to come into our country and um, none of it made it in. So it kind of begs the question like, well, where did this come from? Where did the cesium-137 contamination come from? It could have come from someone dumping some very contaminated water into the ocean and no, not from Fukushima because they removed all those radioisotopes that were in that water that they were using to cool down those reactors there. And so the only thing that they were releasing into the environment was a very small amount of tritium, which I already covered in a video. And I'll link that in the description below so you can kind of get an idea of like how much they're releasing. But the cesium-137 has to be coming from some type of fission reaction. It's, uh, <laughs> it's gotta be someone dumping stuff or it came from some other process when they had that shrimp and uh, either they were washing it off and so maybe they were washing it off with contaminated water. I don't know. So we'll just have to see how this uh, story shakes out. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, short little clip and hopefully that answered some questions that people had. All right, see you. Take it easy.